Have you heard about Yarn Lane, a TV show dedicated to knitting, crochet and all things yarn, bringing you demonstrations from our expert guests as well as the latest tools. And find out what's coming up on the show by following us on Facebook and Instagram. Subscribe to our email newsletter or visit the programme guide on our website at www.yarnlane.com. We know that shopping online can be a confusing and sometimes daunting task and sometimes all you want to do is talk to a human being. Well, our family-run customer service team are on call 24-7. They're full of friendly, warm-hearted individuals, all trained to make your shopping experience as easy and as enjoyable as possible. And not only will they take your order, they will also help and guide you on your shopping journey so you never miss out. Follow Sewing Street and Yarn Lane on Facebook and Instagram to keep up to date with what's coming up on the show, as well as being the first to know about our amazing offers. Get involved with our competitions that are exclusive to social media. And pick up some top tips from us too. Missed the live show? Don't worry, we recorded it for you. Never miss out on your favourite presenters, guests and makes ever again. Head on over to our YouTube pages to watch back the day's live show and enjoy your favourite demos over and over again. We also have lots of great content exclusive to our YouTube pages, such as product demonstrations, troubleshooting videos and so much more. Subscribe and turn on the bell notification so you never miss a show or video ever again. Are you a fan of Sewing Street and Yarn Lane? Why not join our growing Facebook fans pages? Just search Sewing Street Fans and Yarn Lane TV Fans on Facebook and click Join Group. It's that simple. Never miss out on the latest news and updates from our presenters and guest designers, special offers and plenty of chat with your fellow fans. Share photos of your makes, ask for advice, interact with your favourite guests and presenters and be a part of the ever-growing sewing and yarn community. See you there. In need of a crafting fix. There are so many ways you can watch Sewing Street and Yarn Lane. Sewing Street is live from 8 a.m. to 1 p.m. every day on Freeview 72 and Sky 670. Alternatively, if you want to watch us on a tablet or on the move, you can tune in on our YouTube channel, the Sewing Street app, or the websites at www.sewingstreet.com and www.yarnlane.com. You can watch past shows on Sky 670 from 1pm every day, as well as our YouTube channel, the app, and our website. Yarn Lane is on from 12pm to 1pm. Visit our programme guide to find out when and what's on. So you never have to spend a minute without us. Have you heard about all of the different ways you can shop with Sewing Street and Yarn Lane? You can either shop on our websites, sewingstreet.com and yarnlane.com. You can also order by phone by calling our friendly UK customer service team. For Sewing Street, call 0800 001 4433 and for Yarn Lane, call 0800 4700 600. And don't forget about the Sewing Street app. Here you can shop all of the Sewing Street products as well as watch the live shows from anywhere. You can download the app onto your smartphone or your tablet by simply searching Sewing Street in your app store. And one final thing, no matter how many times you check out on Sewing Street or Yarn Lane in one day, you will only pay one postage and packaging. Happy shopping! We know that shopping online can be a confusing and sometimes daunting task and sometimes all you want to do is talk to a human being. Well, our family-run customer service team are on call 
They're full of friendly, warm-hearted individuals, all trained to make your shopping experience as easy and as enjoyable as possible. And not only will they take your order, they will also help and guide you on your shopping journey so you never miss out. Hello, welcome to Yarn Lane. We are the only shopping telly in the UK totally and utterly dedicated to everything yarn, whether it be crochet or knitting or toy making or macrame or all sorts, we do it here. And you are loving it. Now, first of all, I need to tell you that everybody who buys something today, your name will go into today's competition. It's a sewing street competition, but we have actually extended it to Yarn Lane. So all you need to do, there's no, there's no competition competition. All you need to do is buy something, right? Now, uh, it, this might not, it, it might not interest you. It might interest you. It's all about quilting, though. It's about paper piecing and modern hand quilting there. But if you buy something, your name will go in the kit. Lovely Christmas presents. That's all I'm saying. Free, completely for free. All you have to do is buy something and one person tomorrow will win it. Um, uh, somebody called Sue won today. So they've already signed us and it'll be going off tomorrow on Monday. Anyway, the way you can look at what we've got coming up down the show is go to the website, www.yarnlane.com. You click on watch the show live. There'll be me on the left-hand side there. Then on the right-hand side, there's a little box that says send the message to the studio. You can write a message there, any questions or anything, and they were the ones that Paul will bring up across the bottom of the screen in the little white box. Now, as you can see, there's only one column at the moment. There's pre-order. That is everything we have that's coming up in the next hour. Everything that you can see. Now, when we've introduced them, they will go to another column on the left-hand side saying show deals, right? But that is the way of looking at every single thing now that is available in today's show. You can click on it, add it to your basket, check out. Now, you only pay one PMP for the whole day. If you've already bought something from Sewing Street, that's your PMP paid for. If you haven't bought anything from Sewing Street yet and you're just coming in here, there's one PMP. Whether you check out 10 times or if you check out once, it's just $3.95 for the whole day. I have got my Facebook Live open, so if you're watching uh, Yarn Lane Facebook Live, I've got your questions here because Sue has already said hello, John and Catherine. Claire has said hello. Beverly said hello. So uh, do get your messages coming through there. Any questions that you want to ask Catherine, that's absolutely fine. Just send the messages through. She'll be able to answer it. She knows everything there is to know. That's your email, studio at yarnlane.com. And there's the social media. Now, obviously, the Yarn Lane on Facebook is where you watch it. You can also go to Instagram, but you can't watch it on Insta. Can't watch it on Insta. Uh, anyway, shall we start? Shall we say hello to Catherine, first of all, before I introduce you? I'm going to introduce you all to us. Here's Catherine. She's morning. today's Yarn Lane expert. It's not morning, it was afternoon now. It is. I know she used to be near at 8 o'clock in the morning, really. That's what's confusing. Now, if you're confused, tomorrow, Catherine will be on Sewing Street tomorrow as my guest on Sewing Street tomorrow. I will. Can't keep away. Can't keep away. Can't no. keep away. That's the trouble. She more or less lives here. She's got a place in the car park. <laughs> anyway, shall we see what we've got available for you today? So we're going to start with the uh, easy. The easy. We've got three knitting projects and we've got one crochet project, right? Let's start with the cushions, right? The cushions are on the shelf over there that Elliot will be able to show us now. There's the blue one and the pinky red one. Now, these are all from Wool Couture um, and they come like this. They come in a little kit here. So the first one I've got, I've got no code on it, Paul. It's the pink one. Got it? There you go. So what you get in here, oh, these are nice. Ignore those, ignore those for a minute. Right, so you get all of these in here. These are utterly Aran yarn, 50 grams on a ball. They're cotton, polyester, acrylic, silk, hang on. Cotton, polyester, acrylic, silk, linen, and recycled fabric fibres all in one there. They're beautiful, aren't they? I wonder what colour that is. Usually has the colour written on it, doesn't it? No colour on that one. Anyway, you get the pink one, you get the ready one, you get the rusty one. Oh, there you go. Wheat. Wheat, pumpkin, raspberry and cranberry. Cranberry and rhubarb. Oh, hang on. Cranberry and rhubarb all in one? No, cranberry, rhubarb. Wheat, wheat, yeah. Pumpkin, cranberry and rhubarb. What did I say then? Raspberry. <laughs> Was there no raspberry in there? Then? No raspberry. He did say raspberry. Thank you. He's all taking that. 39 99 Now, that's enough to make your cushion, uh, the lovely cushion there. You do get the instructions. 
Oh, you even get a you even get um a darning needle. It's a wool needle on that. Is that what it is? Mm -hmm. Yep. There's your instructions. Oh look, hang on. How to knit. How to cast on. Beautiful, all that, isn't it? And then, oh yeah, look, I could have read here. Look, wheat, pumpkin, granby, and rhubarb. Lovely, isn't it? Striped iron cotton, what you'll need. Now, are the instructions on the, oh yeah, there's all the instructions. There's all the instructions. Well, now this is beautiful, this yarn. It's absolutely beautiful. Um, 39.99 that one is. 39.99. Right, it also comes in the blue. There's the blue one on the shelf there. Now that will have wheat. Oh, now I've got two pink ones. What's that pink one there then? No, 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 hang on, Paul. For some reason I've got two, two versions have of I pink. Given you the wrong I've one? got a blue one here as well. No, oh, that's the scarf. Have you got a blue version yeah, there, Catherine? Yeah, it's me. It's all right. I've you muddled, stay looking at the pink, stay looking at the cushions. Do you want me to tell you the colour? Oh yeah, you can be the presenter now. Here's Catherine. <laughs> The new presenter on Yarn Lane. Let's what clear, have you got let's there, clear then? a little space. So we've got in this one two balls of wheat. Yeah. And we've got ocean. <laughs> She's guessing now. River and grey mist. I okay, don't quite I know which one is which on the blues, no, but I they're agree, two I, lovely blues. Oh, yeah. Which one would you say was river? River, ocean, grey mist and yeah. wheat, did you say? Yes. Okay. So really same, nice combination same yarn, together. And you get the instructions there and you get the... Um, I want to keep calling it a bodkin. It's, it's a tapestry needle. Oh, it's a tapestry needle. Tapestry Just needle. sew up the edges. £39.99. That's the blue version. And that'll make this one. There you go. The blue one, obviously. Uh, very, very easy, Catherine's saying. Very, very easy. Right, now, uh, if you're going to make those, you may need an infill. This is lovely, this one. Oh, look at the grey went over two lines there. It's large feather. It's feather this, I think. Is it not? Feels like feathers. Uh, sponge clean. Duck feathers. There you go. Quack, quack. Cushion into eight pounds. Eight pounds. It's 40 by 40 centimetres. What's that in inches? About 16 inches. Well, that's not a good picture. I'll just put my hand there so you can't see the bottle. Uh, it's just a cushion insert there with duck feathers in it. If you're going to make the cushion. Those cushions look bigger than that for some reason. I don't know why. Have they got that size in? I, I think so. And it does say a 16 inch or 40 centimetre cushion pad oh, okay. in the kit. So. Okay, perfect. Lovely. So that goes, I'll just put, drop that on the floor. Now, something that's going to go really well on this spoiling <laughs> hot day. Is, I mean, it is beautiful. Uh, it is absolutely beautiful, this. Make, yeah, make it time in time for winter. Isn't that lovely? So, in here. Right, okay, there's a, no, there it is. Oh no, it's like an endless bag, this one, isn't it? I've got it, I've got it, Paul, it's here. Oh, he says, no, hang on. I've got no instructions in this one. <laughs> I've got, have you got the colours on your... Have you got the other... Co yes, the colours are on the front. Oh, yes, there they are. You've got river, earth, gre right, oh, grey... Right, grey mist. River's the pale one, then. River's the pale oh, right. one, yeah. I guessed right. Uh, earth. Oh. No, the dark one, I think. That earth. one's earth. Uh, grey mist. I've done, done grey mist. Earth. Corn. Wheat and pumpkin. Hey, they're lovely. These yarns are beautiful. 50 grams on each ball. They're cotton, polyester, acrylic, silk, linen, recycled fibre, fibres mix. 39.99. And it's very easy, this. You get your embroidery needle with this. No, tapestry needle with this one as well. It's been a long day. Uh, loving that. I know it's the hottest day of the year so far, but you know what? Elliot says, make it now in time for Christmas. lovely isn't it okay Elliot says he's going to knit this one as he's a beginner and he'll show you in before Christmas how he's finished it and we'll keep this sample hidden in case he suddenly tries to do it with this it is lovely and soft though I'd wear scarlet it's beautiful Christine says hello everybody hello Christine so that's knitting as well very easy loving those tassels right okay that's that one 
Then I've got this really lovely bag. Now this feels quite um, uh, different. Or um, I've got the white bag. Oh, I've got it in three different colours actually. So I'll do the cream one first. Do the cream one first. There's no there's no silver things on these pools, so I can't tell you. But be this one. Oh, now this looks very different. This. So you got the. It's called. Oh, Elliot, it's called Cheeky Chunky. <laughs> yesterday, Elliot was Chunky Cuddles yesterday. Because <laughs> we had a yarn called Chunky Cuddles, but today's Cheeky Chunky. This is a hundred... Move up. Well, if you got me one that worked, maybe I could. Right. Here we go. This is Merino wool. Now, they breed the sheep. Uh, especially for their wool, they're not good for their meat. They're only they're only uh, bred for their for their yarn. Their wool, and everything's lovely, super chunky yarn. It's called 100% merino wool, made in Yorkshire. Cheeky chunky, and you get the instructions as well. Obviously, obs. Now I imagine this is a little bit more difficult, isn't it? Like that? This yes, of the projects today, this is the probably trickiest. One. But but it's not difficult, difficult. But it's not difficult. No, no. it's achievable. But if you're a beginner, with yes, try the try the cushions, try the scarf. If you're a beginner, but don't try this. Maybe if you're a beginner. No, not if you've never done it before. Because it looks like fancy. Yeah, but but for cabling, it's easy cabling. Oh, it's easy. So maybe if it's the first time you've done cabling. Great for great starting for a first cabling. time cabler. Right. So that's it in the cream natural. That's that finished bag there. Has it got lining in it? Oh no, it's all just knitted through. Oh, hang on, there's a label here. Oh no, it's just a, what's in it, right? That's okay. We normally have names of who've made them, haven't we? I've also got the bag in the grey. That's a lovely colour, isn't it? Grey coming in, same wool. It's nice, isn't it? Wool Couture Natural Grey Cable Bag, $39.99. Well, there seems to be a thing going on today with $39.99, isn't there? It's a lovely colour. I'll get one out for you so you can see the colour. There you go. Pretty. It's, got, it's all, almost got a mild effect within it where it's been spun. It kind of looks like the slightly, you can see it there, like the slightly different colours of grey in there. Lovely. Then, last but not least, in the bag, I've got, I think it's also, did I see a blue one? Oxford, oh, that's not, oh, out, that one really hurt. This is like the colour of my new front door. Yeah. $39.99, Oxford Blue Cable, but I've got to tell you that, Paul, 10 of these, there's only 10 of these available, 10 of these available, beautiful, isn't it? Colour is exquisite, oh, that's definitely my favourite, do you want to have another look at it? There you go, cheeky chunky, Oxford Blue, that's beautiful, that'll work really lovely in the cabling as well, wouldn't it? Or the mop, right, then... Last but not least, that's all knitting, right? That's all you're knitting, right? Then we're going to crochet. And we've got these in three colours. I've got them in... Cinnamon, which is this one. This is Cheeky Chunky as well. But this is crocheted, remember? Crochet. You get two balls of that. Oh! You get the buttons, which look like coconut buttons. Plus you get a bigger needle in that one. Oh, don't try and point, push in the pointy end. Now, what sizes do these go to? Let me have a look. You can make them as big as you want. Oh, you make them as big as you want. So there's no pattern for different sizes. You just keep going till it's your size, do you? Yes. Oh, yeah. Slippers can be made to pretty much any size. Okay. We'll be talking about that later. That's crochet in the cinnamon. I would try them on, but they look a bit small for me. I've also got them in... Oh, hang on. I've got two cinnamons here. This colour, maybe. Yeah. Yeah, I've got graphite. Graphite here, and then we'll go over to Catherine and see the other colour in it. This has been the most popular on pre-order, the graphite. Uh, granite, not graphite. Granite, Paul. Granite, that says. 
cheeky chunky and granite in the gallery there. Beautiful. So that's the, the, to make those in that colour. And then the last colour, Catherine's got the last colour on her desk, not me. Which is called mink. Mink, it's called. Oh. Mink, that one's called. Let's make sure he's, he's said it right. Yeah, mink, yeah. Mink, Amy slipper kit, twenty nine ninety nine. Now that obviously is crochet, or as Paul says it, crotchet. Right, I've got three, four lots of needles to show you today. Let's do knitting first of all. I've got knitting five millimeter, VUZW seventy nine. Then knitting needles, straightforward zing knitting needles, five millimeter. Yesterday, when I was reading out some patterns on, I was on my own on Yarn Day say, and it kept saying UK four millimetres, but then in brackets, it then said two other measurements as well. That's because there's an old fashioned UK measurement. So four mil in new needles is an eight in old needles. Oh, so that, you get- I knew you'd know. <laughs> so it's like, it's like when we don't know between like inches and centimetres. Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. And then there's also US sizes, which are different as well. Okay, perfect. There we go, we need to know. That's, that's a four, five millimetre, 3.99. I've got the seven millimetre. Do you need the, the bag, bag with the seven millimetre? There you go. Seven millimetre, zing. Mm? Yeah. There you go, 5.99 those. Knit Pro. Zing, very good brand. Elliot knows about those. Then I've got for your for your knitting, for your cabling, you'll need these. Your knit pro cables. Oh hang on. Ending 09 that one. Coloured aluminium cable needle, set of two. One ninety nine. One ninety nine. And then, last but not least, for your crochet, you'll need an eight millimeter hook. Now it's not made of ginger wood. Just made it's called ginger. Six ninety nine. If you've got any questions you want to ask, please send them in either by email, or by the white box, or by Facebook Live. We will, or I won't, but Catherine will answer them. Right. Okay. So we're starting with. Uh, the cushion. cushion. Should we start with the cushion? Yeah, please. Which is a lovely, lovely beginner's project. Um, and I actually did a tension square for this. Oh, okay. Um, just because you do actually want your cushion to come out the size of your cushion pad, don't right, you? You yeah. said you thought it was a little bit big. Um, so I did my little tension square, which was 16 stitches and 32 rows. Should be 10 centimetres, but I'm actually a little bit over. But I'm quite a loose knitter. Oh, okay. So does that matter? Well, I'm I'm sort of 10 and a half, 11. It wouldn't be the end of the world, but what you can do if you know you're a particularly loose knitter, right? Then you can go down a size. So you could go down to a four mil. Does it, it matter? Um, it matters more on garments than possibly of course the accessories. But yeah, so don't buy your if it was a big difference, then yeah. then I would definitely go down or up okay. a size. And that all you do, depending so on. So you just it always tells you it tells you on your patterns what your little tension square could be, and and mostly you don't bother, do you? Because it seems quite boring. Yeah. Because <laughs> you want to get on with the project, but actually it didn't take very long to do that. No. And if you were new, it's a good way of practicing actually. Mm -hmm. Um, in a in a small, small with a few, yeah, just a yeah. few. Um, anyway, what you get in this kit, this is such nice yarn. It's oh, beautiful, so isn't it? It's so soft and lovely. Mm. Um, and you get your instructions on how to start. So if you haven't done it before and you want to have a go, this is a really, really good project for that. So I'm just going to literally show you how to cast on and show you your basic stitch because that's all there is in this. Fantastic. Um, so I always cast on using what's called the thumb method. There are different ways of casting on, but this is the way I was taught, so this is what I do. Right. So you have your, you can see I've got it round my thumb, I've got the tail down here, and I've got the ball over here, and I pop my needle under there, and then it's like I'm doing a little knit. So a knit round, put the loop over the top and pull it tight, and that's made my first stitch. So I go again, under my loop, round my thumb, 
round, pull the loop over and pull it tight. And it's a really actually simple, nice, easy way of casting on. And it doesn't get too tight. Some methods of cast on are very, very tight. Yes, uh, yeah. But this is quite nice. So I'll just do a few more, like about 10, and then I'll show you. Uh -huh. The garter stitch. But obviously for the for the cushion. You're but you actually put on four, oh, I think it's 40. 40. No, it's not. It's 64. I wasn't <laughs> even close, was I? <laughs> Completely wrong. I think I'm remembering the scarf. Yeah. Because they're both, the, so the scarf and the cushion both use the same, just a knit stitch, which when you do rows of knit, just knitting, is called garter stitch. Right, so all, then you don't do any pearls? No pearls, you just, just knitting. just knitting. Just knitting. This is why it's so nice for beginners, really. Yeah. There's no shaping, it's just straight. So all you've got to concentrate on is doing your basic stitch, trying to keep your tension nice mm. and not losing any stitches or making any. Okay. Um, so the scarf, I'll show you in a minute. Um, I was on holiday last week, went to, went to Norfolk with my family. Oh, very nice. Very nice. Um, and I took these with me. Brilliant to transport because they come in their little bags. Yeah. And we were sitting doing it and my daughter learnt to knit. She, oh, she's done the scarf bit oh. for me and learnt to knit with it. So oh, I can tell brilliant. you it absolutely works for beginners. Brilliant. Did you have a nice time? Very nice. Did you have nice weather? Mixed. Because I was going to say this week it would have been ideal, yeah. wouldn't it? It's, it's a kind of a tradition in our family that wherever we go, Back at home has a heat wave oh, okay. and it's cold where we are. Yeah, yeah. So, <laughs> but, you know, it's nice to get away, isn't it? Uh, Ellie says, if you went on holiday all year long, then we'd have nice weather all the time here. <laughs> Can't afford to do that, no. sadly. Oh, Elliot says he'll pay. <laughs> anyway, so we've, we've okay. cast on. So I usually slip off the first stitch just because it makes a nice neat edge. And then uh -huh. a garter stitch, you go in at the front, yarn round. Pull back through and yeah, off your needle. So in, yarn round. You're very close to the end of through. the needle. Well, I suppose you have to be, don't well, you? Well, if you have it down here, and Anna was doing this when she was she was learning, it's like you can't get it off then. No. And it, it's getting that balance. You see, you've got to then wiggle them up to get them off the yeah, end. Yeah, 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 I see. So it's best. It comes, just looks a bit teeth tottering on the come, edge. It, yeah, but it comes with practice, you yeah. see. So you get to the point where you know you can keep them on but you're not going to yeah. lose them as well. But you want to be fairly close. And also, you know, my hands are near the edge as well. Anna picked them up and she was trying to do it down here. Uh -huh. It's like, no, you've yeah. got to get a bit close to the edge. Oh no, if you're way down there, you'd be losing it all the time, wouldn't Absolutely. you? Absolutely. So very nice, easy stitch in, round, back through and off. And that is the whole thing over the whole cushion. And what you've got on your pattern, is it tells you how many rows to do for each colour. Right. So if you've got a row counter, and I don't know if we have, do we have Well, we, we do have them. I don't know if they're on the website at the moment, but have a look on the website. So row counter's really handy. Otherwise, is you Is a row counter the little, what looks like you're clicking people yeah, in Yeah, you and turn out. the, yes, the yes, yeah. Yes, yes, yes. Or um, if I haven't got one handy, I do a little tally. Right. Yeah. Um, just so that you're keeping track. But if you want to count your rows of garter stitch, Basically, each raised ridge is is sort of, you've got one that isn't raised and one that is raised. So you can count them in twos, two, four, six, like that. Oh, so okay. you can count your rows like that if you haven't got a row counter. Okay. Again, it's quite a forgiving project. If you were a row or two out, it actually wouldn't make no, a wouldn't. huge difference. Is it difficult when you've done your wheat to then start on your pumpkin? Well, that's your, what I'm going to show you on, on the scarf. scarf. Okay, perfect. So perfect. we'll move so on literally, to that. So literally, you just you do two you do two squares and sew them together, or do you yes. do an oblong and sew it? Oh, I'm just looking. I did. I, did they do it? No, you do the whole thing and you fold it in half. Yes, yeah, so you do. And it. just sew up the, the side the, seams. Yeah. Okay, perfect. Yes. So there isn't even that much showing, really. No, is there? no. All right, brilliant. Put that to one so side. So then we're moving on to the Turn scarf, to scarf now. One. So this is the. So I'm going to just put it like that. And lovely Anna, my daughter, if you look. So how old is she? She's 16. Aww. Now she had to go when she was little, and always found it a bit tricky, yeah. like she hadn't got enough hands. But uh, she picked it up really quickly this time. It was like Aww. a bit of, bit of muscle memory. We've got one tiny hole, but she didn't actually drop no, a stitch. Oh, you didn't have to point that out. I think. I think she just. Knitted it a bit funny, but actually it's pretty good. It's very even. It's pretty good. I have to say it's more even than your than your ch not charm pack. What do you call your sample? Your tension square. Oh, she's giving me such a look 
<laughs> but it's beautiful. No, considering, considering. Yes. No, no, I'm not being rude about yours, but considering no, she's new she's to it. No, she's done very well. She's that's very incredibly well. The... even, those lines, aren't they? Yeah, she has done really well there. Really well. Yeah, perfect. So, um, well done, Anna. And it's a nice, it's a good project for a beginner because again, you've got so many rows per colour, so you can see it growing. Yeah. You know, ten rows of this colour, then you swap ten rows of the next, and that's so. Often a scarf can just seem like the longest thing to do in the world, and you get bored. But yeah. because you're changing colour quite regularly, I don't think you'll get bored with yeah. it. So when you come to change colour, you want to make sure you always do it on the same side. Because if you look on the reverse, you can always see there's like a little oh, like that yeah, where yeah, yeah. you've changed. Mm -hmm. So you want to make sure that you've always got it this way up for your first row of changing colour. What's our next one after brown? And we'll knit along. Uh, colour C. Colour C is grey mist. Do what? It's all right. On my pattern. So, so on the pattern, we've done 10 rows of A, 10 rows of B, which were the river and earth. And now we're doing 12 rows of grey mist. Okay. And you should always keep one of your ball bands. Oh, should you? Because it gives you your washing instructions oh. and it tells you how to wash it. You can dry clean this, you can do it at 30 degrees, you can give it a cool iron. Uh, Elliot's saying, has it got a batch number on it for different dyes? The trouble is with that is I can only talk about fabrics and that is you can't guarantee that one batch, even though it's batch 77 of all colour dye, dot, can never guarantee it's the same colour. Don't know if no, it's the same thing. No, it hasn't got batch numbers on. Sometimes they do. The other thing you always notice on your ball band is it tells you how much meterage yep. there is in it. Mm -hmm. So sometimes you might have a pattern that you really like, but not the fabric, not, not the fabric, not the yarn that it was made for, but you can go by the meterage so oh, you okay. can get an equivalent. Mm -hmm. So you make sure you've got it. This way with the nice the nice side up to you to then knit along and put your next colour in. So have you just cut off? You just so cut you just off cut off before? and you start knitting and what you can do is just tie a little knot. You do have to weave your ends in at the end. Right. That's that but that's why you've got for? your nice needle. Okay. Okay, so a little knot just to stop it unravelling mm -hmm. and then we can knit along. I think this looks better because I've knitted, we or Anna and I, joint effort, we knitted this on the slightly smaller needles. These, right. This is the four mil, so that's why I think our tension looks better than on the oh, tension You're not going to let that go now, are you? My daughter's <laughs> she, tension was she did a great that. job. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'd quite, I'd quite like her to. I, I reckon if she, if she carried on with it, she'd have, it's called a college scarf. She's got you know, a couple of years before, before she goes she to college, college, she yeah. might get it done, might she? Oh. <laughs> She's got a lot of projects that needs finishing, Jan. She's as bad as me. Oh, no. I just want to go across and back, and then you can see how it's changed. Uh -huh. But it's very simple, very simple to do. So it's all the same stitch? And it's all the same stitch, the garter stitch, just the knit stitch that I showed you on the cushion. So That's this is cool. a me. It, I don't know. I'm. I'm. I, I would like to know. Actually, they must have used it. Anyone to know why it's called garter stitch? Yeah, they must use it. Was it stretchy? Yes, it is at actually. The top of their stockings. It, ha it has got some yeah. stretching. Okay. But you think it'd just be called the knit stitch if you're only doing knitting? Well, it is the knit stitch. But you see, when you do just knitting it's garter stitch when you do knit a row purl a row that's stocking stitch so that must have been used to knit your stockings oh, mustn't yeah, it? yeah 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 and then you must have done your garter to hold your stockings yes, up in but the what, other one so knitting stitch on its own is garter stitch yes knit one purl one is stocking stitch no that's say. a rib knit a row purl a row is knit stocking a row, purl stitch a row. but then what's purl 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 or don't you do purl purl, purl? well it would come out the same as garter stitch would it? Yeah. But back to front. <laughs> it would look the same because a purl stitch looks like the raised bit. Oh, so if you just did purl, 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 purl. It purl. would look the same okay. as this, yeah. Fine. But knitting's easier than purling. Yeah, yeah. Yes. I understand now. Yes. And knit one purl one's called what? That's a rib. Rib. Because that's stretchy as well. Yeah. So can you see then on the reverse side as I come back along, you've got that, that change of colour. Yeah. 
So if you want to have that stripy... See, I've done a pearl row by accident. I've messed it up. Oh, no! <laughs> I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have to undo Anna's work. Because <laughs> you can see how there, when you've got the a knit... knit oh, yeah, yes. It looks different. Oh, she won't... I've done that out of just habit. Yeah. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah. Because oh. I'm not thinking... But this is... Because it is all one stitch, you haven't got to think about it. This is a good telly... This is a good telly project. Because if you are... a a, a knitter who's done it before, you'll be able to do this without even looking at it. So, easily. My nan, my nan used to be able to do that constantly. She yes. knits complete, we used to knit as Aran jumpers and cable knit jumpers and not, and watch yeah. the telly and chat yeah. and smoke and everything all at the same time. <laughs> but it's good, it keeps your hands busy and it stops you snacking. Oh, yes. Now, well, what are you saying? Take up knitting, John. <laughs> Right, what show, do you want to look at the cable bag next? Yes, please. Okay. So can I, 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 what I'll do is just remind yes, you of, of those course. while we've done that. So the scarf's in at the moment. Wool couture, rainbow, oh, no, that says rainbow cushion, sorry. We're doing the scarf at the moment. There you go, uh, college scarf kit. You get, um, this is the finished thing here and you get all the different colors in there. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful yarn. It's going to feel so soft against your uh, skin. Cotton, polyester, acrylic, silk, linen, and recycled fibers mix, plus your instructions, plus your needle at $39.99. And the two cushions that we did, we had the pink cushion. Blue's the most popular, but pink's first one. So you get wheat, cranberry, rhubarb. No, what was the other color? Pumpkin. Oh, I was right, I was right, rhubarb and wheat. Oh, you get two wheats, actually. Plus your instructions, that's for your pink cushion, which will make you... <laughs> that one. Lots in baskets, make sure you check out. And we also have it in the blue. You can see it finished there, so we don't have to come back to that picture. And, oh, I haven't got the blue, you've got the blue, haven't you? There you go, $39.99. So you've got the wheat, the ocean, the river, and the gr why mist. Grow why mist. Trust me, John, there's always room for snacks and biscuits. Or when you're machine knitting. <laughs> machine knitting. Oh, that takes me back. $39.99 for that cushion. Right, we're now going to move on to the cable bag, uh, which is this one, which is much more... I don't want to say intense, but it's more of a... What's the word I'm looking for? Uh, this. Do you know what I mean? It's this. <laughs> it's very textured, isn't it? Yes, textured, it's quite very that's a good one. dense. It's been partly felted. Pardon? It's been partly felted. That's why it feels... What does so, that mean? So, you know, you know when you put your lovely wool jumper in the wash and it shrinks? Oh! Okay, that's felting it. I, I'm not even allowed to wash my husband's jumpers anymore because I, without fail, will felt, felt them. them. I once felted a pair of very beautiful cashmere pyjamas that he bought me. Completely ruined them. Oh, my goodness. But I cut up, cut them up and made them into everything and made, used every scrap. Oh. But this is partly felted. So, so it means it's been in a hot washing machine? No. Oh. Um, <laughs> so if you wanted to totally felt it, yes, hot wash, detergent, yeah, yeah. makes it totally dense. They tell you to um, partly felt it, so just with water, not too hot, no detergent. Right. And it will give it that dense texture that you oh, can feel. Okay. So it's not quite do, as soft do, do as that. you have that. to do it? I think you'll find it, will, it won't stretch. Okay. Um, so much. Oh, right. yeah? yeah. When you put yeah. things in it, because it feels very st quite sturdy, doesn't yeah, it? Yeah, yeah. No, that's what I thought. Yes. So if you didn't felt it, it would be a bag. You'd, you'd put some perhaps potatoes start in, it's to find yeah. that, like you can see, I've knit knitted part of it here, and yeah. you'd probably find that handle starting yes, to give a little. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Right. So where do we start with this? So okay. we've got cable. What's the other stitch then? So we've got garter stitch. We're, we're knitting it. There's only two. There's only knitting and purling in knitting. We've got knitting oh, and purling. There? Yes, there's only two stitches. Oh, okay. Well, it's just the order you put them in. Fine. Even with cabling, that's yes. knitting and purling, but in a different order. Yeah. Oh, I didn't know that. Yes. Okay. Which is why you've got to have your pattern. Yes. Yes. Um, 
Yes, so because it's merino wool, that's why it will felt. Yes. It's not been tightly, tightly spun. So you can see where I've oh, where yes, I've um, cast on there, the bit that's left, you can see it's starting to unravel. It, so could, this this is this is really the yarn pre-spun almost yeah. at this, this point. It's been very, very loosely spun. But it stays all right whilst you're knitting it, Yeah, it? so yeah. when you're knitting with it, what you find is you want to keep it fairly tight. Yeah. Yes. Um, now, what I want to show you with this is we start off this handle and the trim at the top with garter stitch, but you knit into the back of the stitch, not the front like I did earlier. So I'm right. going to show you that, and then I'm going to show you how you cast on off and on to get your handle but I've just made okay. a smaller de demo right, piece because okay, there was perfect. quite a lot of stitches so with this one normally I would put my needle in that way for garter stitch uh -huh. but you're going to put it in that way right to the back and just knit it like normally this is it's somehow much trickier and slower to do than to do it in the front way right <laughs> I can't do this quickly but it's a a strong it's stronger apparently okay. so you can see that I'm going into the back of it you've also got to be quite careful with this because it is so loosely spun just to make sure you don't split the yarn yeah. as you come back through because you could end up getting in a little bit of a tizz with it and making extra stitches so that's your garter stitch then you're going to cast some off right. to make this little handle part so you need okay. to slip one over the top starts to cast them off right so you're taking you're taking the one so you take before yes yeah, so not the one you've just knitted the one before it goes over the top which casts it off and so you just do as many as you need so on the actual bag you start with 58 stitches, uh -huh. you do eight rows of garter stitch, right. then you knit 10, cast off 38, knit 10 to the end. But then you have to obviously have to cast back on again. Once yes, you get to the which end I'm going handle. to just show you how to do because it's, yeah, yeah. it's not immediately apparent. Oh, okay. Well, I, it wasn't immediately apparent to me <laughs> <laughs> which way to do it. You had to turn your needles around. So I'll just oh, into the back, go across. So right. can you see they're right. accidentally caught it. Yeah. So you just just have to take this bit steady. But I have to say these knitting needles, the the what they call zing. Them, yeah, they're great. Knit the, pro the, zing. You, your yarn really slides on them really nicely. I suppose that's what you want, isn't it? Especially you don't want it to stick. Yeah. No. Oh, I see. Okay, so then, so there's my little gap. Yeah. But then I've got to cast on again to make. The bottom part. This this whole bag is knitted in one piece. Okay, so that that handle, you've only you only miss one, you only miss one row out for to make that hole. Yeah. Oh. Yes. It looks like it would be more. Doesn't yes, it? it does. It's because when you cast back on, you don't cast on quite as many stitches, so it right, gives it then, the shape. But then you see that looks longer. It looks like there's a deeper. I thought you were going to say you cast off eight, then you cast off ten, then you cast off twenty, and then you. No, cast not at all. No, you you've cast off. What did I say? Thirty-eight. Yeah. When you cast back on, you only cast on twenty-eight. Oh, so that is longer. Yes. I see. I've got it now. So that's why it gives yeah. it the shape. So we'll just knit across here. Okay, so we've got to this point. We need to cast on again. Uh huh. What you've got to do is you've got to turn your needles round and then start to cast on. So, okay. and we're going to do this, not the thumb method this time, two needles. So it's like you're knitting yeah. and you slide your needle on like that. And the loop mm. you make goes back on your needle. Okay. The graphics at the moment of the grey one, we're, we're knitting with the cream one. This is the grey one is in the graphics at the moment. I'll show you the colours when we finish the demo. So when you've cast on the number that you need, you then turn it back round yeah. and then you can carry on the rest of the row and that will join it up again. It doesn't tell you in the instructions that you have to turn it round to do your casting off, oh, but you do. Oh, do they just presume you know that then? Yes. Which is why it's called intermediate, yeah. I suppose. Okay, so then if 
I get to the end, you can see I've made the little hole. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's not anything particularly tricky. You just have to realise you've got to turn it around. So you can see that's going to cast back on yeah. and then you can carry on with your pattern. Oh, okay, so that's it. That's the handle done. Yeah. Obviously being a bigger version. Yeah. A bigger so then version. you do a few more garter. Yeah. So pop that there. A few more rows of garter stitch and then we start our little cable Section. Which is where you need your other... Now, does it matter that the cable needle is much thinner than the knitting needle that you're going to use? Does that Well, not... I think in that pack you've got two sizes, haven't you? I've just got two colours. So you do... you've got... Oh, yeah, one's yeah, fatter than the other. The yeah, pink so one's fatter than the blue one. Yeah, so you'd use the fattest one, one. Okay. Of, of the pack. But you don't so have you... to match it to the size of your needle. I'd, ideally, you would, right. but... If it was one or you know yeah, one yeah, or two got, sizes out, it wouldn't be that the big yeah. one will be fine. Okay. Because all it's doing is sitting on the cable needle for a very short while. Oh, you're not knit. Do you not knit from? Well, you do, but only a small quantity okay. of stitches. Okay, right, I'll shut up. So we've got. <laughs> that's fine. Mm -hmm. We've got six rows of pattern. Um, the first row is just a knit row. Right. The second row has various quantities of knit and purl and then we get the third row has a cable right yeah um pattern so we're starting by knitting six and at this point you're just doing normal a normal knit stitch we're not going into the back of it that was just on your handle and trim uh -huh. okay and then we're going to cable six c6f which means cable cross six at the front. So what you do is you put three stitches onto your cable needle, just slip them off, leave it at the front of your work. Right. Why hasn't your cable needle got a kink in it? Um, because this is the one that came from wool couture for me oh, to okay. use. Oh, okay. Sometimes they have a kink and sometimes yeah. they don't. So it's not important, right? Not so you're taking really. three stitches off. I have. I'm putting them to the front. I'm going to knit three stitches behind. And then we're going to take the three on the cable needle and knit them back on, like so. So what it's done is created a twist yeah. in your... Oh, okay. Yeah? Yeah. Okay, then we're going to knit seven. Then you knit to the next one. Yeah. It's a, it's a nice cable pattern. It's not too complicated. You, You'd quickly learn it, so you didn't have to keep checking keep going back. Keep pattern, yeah. Yeah. Because you can kind of see where you're going as well, once yeah. you've done a little bit of it. Okay, so this one we're doing... Um, Double. The same forward again, and then we're going to do it backwards. So three at the front. Going to knit three off the big needles, and then our three off the cable needle. And then we're going to do the same but backwards. So we're going to slide our three stitches onto our cable needle and leave it at the back. Oh, that's what makes the difference. And then that twist. makes it twist yeah. a different way. See. Hmm? So you've got one. So they sort of go outwards, don't they? Almost like a, a leafy pattern. Yeah, yeah. In my final year of university, I knitted a very complicated cable cardigan. Oh, did you? I did. I actually did an English degree, John, so I don't think I did much work, did I? <laughs> <laughs> I would say it wasn't for your degree, though. No, I just, uh, I just did knitting. I thought just did you meant knitting. you did a knitting no. degree. Oh, no. <laughs> I just like knitting. I've always done knitting. Oh. I used to knit massive, oversized jumpers for my friends because <coughs> there was a wool shop close to where I lived. Oh. Where did you go to uni, then? Hull. Oh, oh. Funny that. Now, because Julie Kelly, the guest on yesterday, she was talking about Hull University because her dad used to teach there. Oh, right. And then I said my friend Sarah Green went to Hull University to do drama, which had been a long time before your time. So it's all sort of uh, lots of Hull references going on. It was a good place. Yeah. OK, and then on this last one, we're just going to do three to the back right. again. So there's only one row in your pattern of six rows where you're using your cable needle. And then the rest are just combinations of knitting and purring. What do you mean there's only one? Oh, so there's what? only this one row 
row three of your six row pattern yeah. that you're doing this cabling. Oh. And then the rest are just combinations of knits and pearls. Oh, are they? Yeah. So it's not very difficult at all. Mm. Um, and you carry on your cable pattern to a certain length, 30 centimetres. Shape your bottom of your bag. Yeah. Then you increase out again and then you cable up the other side. Perfect. I just realised the time I'm enjoying so this too go. much. Right. This comes in three different colourways. You've got the natural cream that's in at the moment, which will make the one Catherine's just done there. We've also got it in the grey. This is the grey. I'll just show you one of the grey colours. You get four balls of the grey. There's your grey. And it also comes in that beautiful Oxford blue. Okay, I'm going to move on to crochet now. I've just realised the time. Sorry about that, everyone. <laughs> so these little slippers. Oh. Did you get that in the kit, then? I think so. Maybe. Okay, I've just found that in the bottom of the bag. I don't know if you get that or not. I'm going to say you don't, and then if you do, it's an added bonus, isn't it? Right. Now we're going to do the slippers, the most important, the most uh, popular one. Oh, yeah, it's in every bag. So you must get, you must oh, get that. Oh, that's good then. It's not in that bag anymore. You must get that with it. Right, crochet slippers. Let's go on to those. We've got that in three different colours. We've got it in grey and granite, sorry, which is this colour. That's the grey. Also comes in... Uh, not paprika, cinnamon. Very popular. And it also comes in mink, which is what you're going to see Catherine use, and I haven't got the mink one here. Right. So, crochet, slippers, a few minutes go. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Those little ones fit me. I've had them on. They're really snuggly. Oh, are they? Yes. What you size would... shoe have you got? Oh, I've only got uh, for size five, only little feet. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. But you want them to stretch a bit for your feet. Yeah. Yeah, so they don't go baggy. They're um, like Mary Jane's, aren't they? They are. They're really sweet. Um, I think that you want to, be, because it's the merino wool again, you just have to be careful about felting them. Oh, yes. Yes, yes, yes. yes. So really nice and straightforward pattern it's a double crochet all the way which i've started right um it told you i think it told me to do 10 rows when you start off you're literally going in a spiral so sometimes when you're going around you've got to remember where the beginning and the yeah. end is you don't even have to do that with this oh, okay. you can just go round and round which is great but how do you know where to finish well <laughs> it tells you well, you could put a, a marker if you wanted to, but I, because I was doing it and I was measuring it on my foot, I just went far enough so that when I popped it over my toes, it, it was big right. enough. Yeah. Okay. So that means you can just make it, you know, you can sit okay. there. If you're making a pair for your, well, your hubby might not want Mary Jane's mm, Maybe pair. not, no. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think I, even Nana. I'd wear these. Put them on, put them on. <laughs> to test them. Yeah, I'm just thinking my hubby would think I'd gone bonkers. What do you mean, think? He, he knows, knows that. I am, yeah, he does. Okay, so it's just double, it's just <laughs> so it's double just crochet. Double. And then when you get to, as long as you want, you're yeah. then going to start in rows. Um, so you're just going to then go across, backwards and forwards, across your. So, are we, which bit are we so doing? you're going to do 15. So uh, that's my toe bit, and then this becomes the underneath. The oh, bit okay. That is, and so this is why you can make them as long as you want to uh -huh. to fit any feet, because right. you go as many rows as you need to do. So we're going to go 15 double along. Now, sometimes when people are starting, and again, this is a lovely beginner's project. Yeah. Oh, you, you can struggle. really see the stitches. You can really there, see you? where you're going and you can really count them. So you can see I've done six there. You've got six B shapes. Uh -huh. And you can see where you're going into between the different um, stitches. And again, this is a lovely needle, not needle, hook. Hook. These ones that we have here. Ginger they from slide Nipro. beautifully. Yeah. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I always do this, don't I? I have to count. Out loud. Uh-huh. Nine. Are you really annoying if you're doing this in front of the telly and everyone's <laughs> trying to watch the telly? Well, I can count in my head. <laughs> <laughs> it's hard. It's only, you know, if you talk to me at the same time, you see. I can't hold the number. 
in the head as well. These are a ni nice quick make, you know, you do these up in a couple of minutes uh -huh. ready. So you can see how that's then starting to oh, make yes, the see. side of the shoe. Uh -huh. and then, so you then you just round turn around and go back. Go back again, absolutely. Oh. Doing a chain at the beginning of each one. Just to bring your hook up high enough. Yeah. And just make just sure one. You, just one. Just one. Just one. Yeah. yeah. And you just work all the way across. So you go down at, as far as you need to. Yeah making sure it's quite snug and then all you do you can maybe see it on your example one just sew up the back of the oh thing. up the heel so there. up the heel yeah so but there's no, there's no shaping in it so that there when you've got to row one two three four five six seven eight maybe you then go all the way around but keep going a bit more to make so, the strap no you strap you join on at the end so when you've done enough and you've sewn up that bottom bit you then oh okay you then crochet pick up pick, pick up the stitches along the side and crochet your strap brilliant yes how fantastic so they're the mink ones that Catherine's making there they're 29.90 well they're all 29.90 you just have to choose do you want mink or do you want cinnamon They orange for cinnamon, I'd say. Oh, would you like granite? Oh, there's a picture of them there on that. Let's have a look at the picture. There you go, the picture on. Granite, very popular. Lovely. And they're all done on a size eight crochet hook. Yeah, and, and if your tension, Elliot's going, if your tension square's too big, go down a size. Yes, please do. This one hasn't got a tension square, actually. Uh, did you not do a tension square? It doesn't have, it doesn't no, have one. No, just because you can just make it to whatever size you, you want. You see, Elliot feet. might need an extra few balls for his feet because he's got chunky feet. Uh, when is Yarn Lane on next, please? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're done? We're finished? We're done? Unless you want to recap on anything. No, no, you have to look along the thing on the master schedule. Yeah, yeah, it's not there. Okay, I'll tell you on who's on. Anyway, we'll come back to that. Do you want to recap on anything here then, Paul? Okay, we're going to go now. We're not quite sure when Jan Lane's back next. There's a bit of a confusion on the, on, the, um, uh, on the master schedule. We think it's on the 23rd, but we'll let you know. Thank you, Catherine, for coming all this week. Thank now, you'll see Catherine tomorrow on Sewing Street. And you're doing um, Flying Geese Purse. Yes. And a little, I've unpacked the box. I uh, oh, know. a lovely quilt. Oh, it's beautiful. Lovely quilt. Beautiful. Oh, Tim yes. Holtz, isn't it? Tim Holtz quilt. Really, really lovely quilt. So thank you for coming in. Thank you for joining us. Everything is on the website. Please check out when you've got it in your basket. Um, I'll see you on Sewing Street tomorrow morning at 8 o'clock.